first. Good morning from the garden. My name is Vera Göting. I am a gardener, designer of edible gardens and the author of the book Edible Paradise. And in today's video, I want to give you my five best tips for maximizing the productivity of your kitchen garden. It's the end of March and that means for us in Northern Europe that it's the very beginning of the new gardening season. This week we planted out the first plants that were started on the windowsill. I have made the first direct sowings. And I thought this would be a great moment to talk about different strategies that can help you to get the most out of your plot. They're very useful, especially if your gardening space is small. And I think that's true for a lot of people. Um, but even if it's larger, like our kitchen garden currently is decent size. But if we want to be harvesting a variety of crops over a long period of time and eating from our garden through, throughout the year, we have to be smart about it. Number one, use row covers. I am a big fan of row covers because I think they're a great uh, low tech, uh, low cost way to prolong your gardening season and extend it both at the beginning and at the end. I employ a variety of um, materials to cover my uh, beds after the first plantings and sowings and because the soil under a row cover will warm up sooner and because they will protect the crops from too much wind and too much cold, they will, it means that you will be able to harvest a couple of weeks earlier than if you did not use them. In early spring, I used them to cover my first sowings um, of crops such as mustard greens, lettuce, carrots, and they serve a dual purpose. They not only protect the crops from too much cold but also from pests and for that reason I use them actually throughout the season. First it's, uh, it's as a protection uh, against cold first and then at the end of the season but um, during the summer they can also be employed to protect your crops against pests. My tip number two <laughs> is growing vertically. Currently we have the first uh, crop that will be grown vertically planted here and it's sugar snap peas. And in this case also uh, the row cover protects uh, against cold and against uh, birds in this case that like to eat the young plants. Um, I like to grow different varieties of sugar snap peas. You could obviously grow other varieties of peas but I just usually grow sugar snaps and I choose varieties that will grow to the height of about two meters, which is the height of our trellis. The individual panels are about a meter wide and what I will do later in the season, we have more of those. Uh, I put one at the north end of a bed and grow vertical crops against it. And that means that I'm virtually adding two square meters to our growing space. Later in May, I will use the trellis uh, to grow non-hardy vegetables such as climbing beans, uh, cucum cucumbers. Uh, if you're in a warm climate, you could even use it to grow melons. But in our climate, we will use it to grow some winter squash. This can support even varieties with quite heavy fruits, we have found out. Um, and this is a great way, growing squash with vertically is a great way to incorporate it into your garden because otherwise it's a crop that will take up a lot of space. My tip number three is to harvest in ways that will mean that you can harvest from the same crops over a long period of time. One of those ways of harvesting methods is leaf by leaf, which you can do, for example, with chart, of which we still have some in the greenhouse. By harvesting the outer leaves and letting the heart of the plant regrow, we will extend the harvesting period over, in some cases, many months. Um, you can do the same with lettuce. These are hardy varieties of lettuce that were sown towards the end of summer in August, I think, and then planted out here at, in October. And we've been picking from those in the past months in the same way. 
just harvesting the outer leaves and then letting the plant regrow. Another crop that is well suited to this way of harvesting is kale. Another harvesting method that will help you to get the most of a limited space is so-called cut and come again. And that means sowing your plants, leafy plants usually, that quite densely and then harvesting them repeatedly by cutting them about two and a half centimeters or one inch above ground and letting them regrow. And this method is particularly suited to things like mustard greens, rocket salad or lettuce. My tip number four is eat the whole plant. Oftentimes um, the whole of a plant or the, the whole of a vegetable plant is edible, not just the part that it is traditionally grown for. And uh, this way you can maximize your yield and sometimes extend the harvest period. A great example of this are these kale plants, which are now beginning to uh, flower and set seeds, um, which means that the harvesting of the leaves is nearing the end. But we can now harvest the flower buds and use them as a kind of uh, quite mild and nice tasting mini broccoli. Um, and even later, if we leave them longer, the um, the flowers are edible too. Other examples of using different parts of vegetables are um, Brussels sprouts, which are usually grown for the sort of mini cabbages, but you can eat at the top of the plant, the sort of loose leafed uh, cabbage as well. You can eat the inner leaves of cauliflower, for example, um, or other examples that I can think of are leaves of beetroot, that can be used in much the same way as you would use chard or seed pods of radishes. When your radishes bolt prematurely, you can still get a little harvest uh, from, the, from the green seed pods, which have a nice, uh, slightly peppery taste. My final number five tip and my favorite one is grow polycultures. Polycultures are mixed plantings of uh, different kinds of vegetables with herbs, uh, edible flowers thrown in the mix. And they have many uh, benefits. One of them being that you can get a larger overall yield from the same area than if you were growing just one crop. I think polycultures are particularly valuable if your growing space is quite small because they make it possible to harvest different things, a, a large variety of crops from quite a small space. And over the years I've developed many different polycultures for our beds, which are size 1.2 by 3 meters. For example, uh, one of my favorite examples is the Mexican polyculture, in which I combined crops that hail from the Central, Ameri uh, some from Central America, such as um, corn, beans, tomatillos, uh, some herbs that are used in Mexican cuisine, and zinnias. Through the diversity of crops in a polyculture, you have sort of a natural insurance against uh, too many disease or pest problems. Uh, but beyond that, I think polycultures are often also very visually attractive and just nice to look at. And if you want to have maximum productivity from a very limited space, then I would recommend my sown polyculture, which was designed in a way that it can be sown once. I do it around mid-April when the soil has really warmed up. Uh, but the variety of crops in it is such that you will be harvesting from about three weeks after sowing until the end of the season. Uh, it combines crops such as um, mustard greens, different varieties of lettuce, uh, different varieties of carrots, beetroot, chard, herbs, but also parsnips and uh, radicchios, which will continue growing and you'll be able to harvest them uh, till the winter months. All these polycultures that I mentioned and many more and many more tips for, for getting the maximum out of your plot while also making it attractive and nice to be in are uh, in my book Edible Paradise. So I would highly recommend you check it out. Of course, I'll put all the links to where it's available in the description box. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have other tips on how to maximize the productivity of your growing space, it would be great if you could share them for other people in the comments. Happy gardening.